In an article dated June 21st, 1995, the Boston Globe will state that throughout the 1980s, the blind sheikh, Omar Abdel Rahman, a radical fundamentalist cleric from the Egyptian sect, the Gamma Islamia, was a spiritual leader of the CIA-backed Mujahideen. Later, the Atlantic Monthly will later report that throughout the 1980s in Peshawar, Pakistan, Abdul Rahman became involved with the U.S. and Pakistani intelligence who were orchestrating the Afghan war. The 60 or so CIA and Special Forces officers based over there considered him a valuable asset. According to one of them, who remains anonymous and who overlooked his anti-Western message and incitement to holy war, he said, quote, he is unable to unify the groups, but he helps coordinate some of the activities. He tends to favor the two most radically anti-Western factions, end quote. These factions were led by Gulbuddin Hekmatar of Hizubi Islami and Abdul Rasul Sayyaf. Both men would do what other Afghan leaders wouldn't do and recruit foreign Arabs into their ranks. He also has close links to another imam. Abdullah Yusuf Azam. He was also bin Laden's mentor. According to Barnett Rubin, a Columbia University professor and senior fellow at the Council on Foreign Relations, Azam was also working with the CIA to help recruit four and unite the Mujahideen groups throughout the years 1985 and 1989 until he was assassinated in 1989. The CIA relies even more heavily on Abdul Rahman after he is assassinated in 89. Rubin had claimed that the CIA paid him to send back to Peshawar to preach to the Afghans about the necessity of uniting Arabs into their ranks and other Afghan factions to help overthrow the Kabul regime. As a reward for his help, the CIA gives him a visa to the United States, even though he is on a global terrorist watch list. One source who worked with the CIA Supply operations at the time will later say that Abdul Rahman ties to Hekmatar and the CIA's most favored Afghan warlord, but, quote, put Sheikh Omar in the CIA's good books. And believe me, later on, when the Sheikh wanted to come to the estates, he cashed in those chips, end quote. In early 1989, the United States government sent 25 high powered sniper rifles to a group of fighters in Afghanistan that included Osama bin Laden. The help was indirect. However, by supplying weapons to Afghans and Arabs, some of those weapons landed in the hands of radicalists. Also, in 1986, the United States under President Reagan agreed to make a shipment of Stinger missiles, which would help turn the tide of the war. The armor-piercing weapons have range-finding equipment and night vision scopes. In an early 2001 U.S. court trial, Isam al-Ridi, a pilot for Osama bin Laden in the early 1990s, will recall that he helped ship the weapons to Abdul Azam. Azam and bin Laden are close to each other at this time, and al-Ridi will later testify he sometimes saw the two of them together. The president of the U.S. company that made the rifles will later state that the rifles were picked up by U.S. government trucks shipped to U.S. government bases, and shipped to those Afghan freedom fighters. The rifles are considered ideal for assassination. The order is worth about $5 million at the time and is a significant one for the manufacturer, accounting for 15 to 25% of its annual turnover on the guns. Their export would usually require an end user certificate from the United States Department of State but the circumstances of the safe and the sale are unknown, as already has not asked how he manages to purchase such a large number of rifles. The CIA, of course, will deny being involved in the transfer. However, Alvedi will later say that the CIA was well aware that bin Laden ended up with some of those guns. This shipment is especially significant because there was a protracted debate within the Reagan administration about sending sniper rifles to Afghanistan due to worries that it could violate a U.S. law against assassinations and put U.S. officials in legal jeopardy. In the end, the United States gave less than 100 of such rifles without night vision scopes to the government of Pakistan 
to pass on to the Mujahideen since non-government organizations were not welcome. But the ones sent to Azam had night vision scopes. The timing is also significant since the Soviet Union agreed to withdraw its troops from Afghanistan in 1988 and complete the poll out in February of 1989, right around when those rifles were sent. The rifles given to Pakistan appeared to have arrived before 1987. 